to open today's proceedings, I'd like to welcome Professor Tim Stewart. Thank you very much, Jude. So, good morning, everyone, not just here in, in Waterloo, but we have a number of classrooms up and down the country where members of staff and students are gathering to take part in this conference, as well as, of course, a number of people online. This is the second of our digital skills uh, conferences, and I, I hope that this will be a fixture for many years to come, because this is one of the great issues of our age, is how all of us, and when I say all of us, I'm talking as much to the members of staff of various levels of seniority, as I am to our students, of how all of us upskill to navigate and cope with the world around us. Uh, adjusting for uh, new skills and new environments is not new in human history. There have been tremendous changes in the past as people have coped with things like uh, electricity and steam power and so on. But what we see with the digital skills that are becoming more and more important for us is that the pace of change is faster than anything we've seen in human history. And it has never been more important for us to be aware of this and very active in our attempts to improve our ability to cope. Now, by way of introduction, I just wanted to perhaps give some uh, examples from my own personal family of uh, how we cope with digital skills. Over Christmas I attended the funeral of my 98-year-old grandmother who was born back in whenever it was, 1919, in a rural community. She lived her entire life without really having to have any digital skills. Right up to the end she never ever owned a mobile phone or a computer. Um, I don't think she even had a digital radio. Um, she never ever looked at the World Wide Web. She never felt any need to do online shopping or search for anything on Google. Her entire life was outside the, the digital world. If I contrast, contrast that with my parents in their 70s, I see something completely different. Although they were educated in a non-digital age and their careers had very little digital impact, as um, retirees, they've had to adjust enormously as citizens. They have an online bank account. They shop online. They have numerous digital devices around their house. And they are fully involved in learning the skills to cope and make use of the advantages of the digital age. When I then look at my wife and I approaching 50, um, it's a very different situation. We're in the middle of our careers and we're seeing that the relevancy of our own education and our own experience is, is being threatened. My wife uh, decided to completely retrain at the age of 46 as a digital marketeer because her own skills as a marketeer were increasingly not valued by the job market. She didn't have the skills to get the jobs and to be able to contribute in the way that she wanted. And for many people of my generation, this is the case. And we are having to relearn and we are having to push ourselves to be able to cope and, and maintain our, our place in the job market. As the Vice Chancellor of a university, I need to be acutely aware of this, and I need to make sure that BPP is serving its students well. And we have a number of initiatives beyond today's conference to bring digital skills into our curriculum. We have a number of initiatives to try and raise the skills of our staff so that they can work efficiently using digital tools. So more than ever, it is important for us to be questioning and challenging what we're doing and looking for new solutions and new ways of coping. In terms of programmes, in the last few years, BPP have offered many new programmes that play to new professions that we believe will be significant in the job market. We have degrees now in data analytics, cybersecurity, software engineering, network management. All of these sorts of things are becoming mainstream educational qualifications leading on to the jobs of the future. We know right now in this country there is a skills gap. We know that many, many companies cannot fill vacancies in a number of areas. And not just in the ultra-technical disciplines such as IT, but in their marketing teams, in their human resources teams, in their sales teams, in all of the roles that they perform, in the health sector, 
digital skills are required. And the supply of digital skills is not keeping pace. So all of us are going to need to do more to make ourselves relevant. When I turn my attention down to my children, who are 8 and 12, I see a very different situation. Okay? Both of them were using digital devices from a very young age, rightly or wrongly. And one of the biggest uh, issues for me in terms of digital skills is actually my role as a parent. How do I bring up a teenager in a digital age? I feel very ill-equipped to do that. And for many people of my generation, that is perhaps more than the career, the bigger thing where we feel skills deficient and knowledge deficient. My children are very, very comfortable with the digital age. And I notice even between my eight and 12 year old, a little bit of a difference as my eight year old lectures my 12 year old on how to do various things online. So this is a whole new world. It is a whole new world and we need to make sure that we keep pace with it, we're open to it, and we question the practices that we've been involved with historically, and we look for new ways of doing things which are more exciting, more efficient, more effective, and we keep ourselves highly, highly relevant. Today's conference just begins to dip into this subject, but we have got a great lineup and some great speakers here. And my thanks to everybody who is contributing as a speaker today. Could I also thank the student digital champions who played an important role in putting today, today's uh, conference uh, together and a number of the support staff also um, who have played a role. BV University is very, very committed to improving digital skills and I hope you will take an active role today in the polls and in your questioning and make this a successful conference that we can build on for the years to come. Okay, I'm now going to hand to Andrew Chadwick, the Dean of the Law School, who I know is a digital pioneer in his own right, <laughs> to introduce our first speaker. <laughs>